Hello again, my friends. Welcome back to The Morning Mindset. I'm so thankful that you are joining me to align your mind with the truth of God's Word. We need it every day, don't we? We wake up, we're in a kind of a funk, we're thinking only about ourselves, and getting our minds aligned with God's Word is one of the things that moves us in the right direction for the day. So I want to thank you and encourage you. You're doing a good thing here. Well, today we're going to be looking at Proverbs chapter 18, once again, verse number three. And the title of this episode may seem pretty obvious to you, but I think from the passage, you're going to see that it has a meaning beyond what you might think. And that is that wickedness is harmful. Now, before we dive into that, I want to invite you to reach out to me. I love hearing from listeners. I love interacting. You can reach me at Kerry, C-A-R-E-Y, at com. I would love to hear from you. All right, Proverbs chapter 18, verse 3 says this. When wickedness comes, contempt comes also. And with dishonor comes disgrace. So let's read it again and listen very carefully to the words. When wickedness comes, contempt comes also. And with dishonor comes disgrace. Solomon is telling us in this passage that wickedness has evil effect and harmful effect in lots of areas you don't even recognize at times. He's saying when wickedness comes into a situation, contempt comes also. Now, what is contempt? Contempt is this attitude that we can have at times of looking down on other people of disdaining them, of thinking them not worthy of our time or of our attention or of our love. And wickedness breeds contempt, is what Solomon is saying here. When we allow wickedness, and that could be in the form of any sin or any behavior or any sort of shading or coloring of the truth, when wickedness comes into a situation it's going to breed contempt, typically in the heart of those who are doing the sin, but possibly in the hearts of others who are viewing the sin and seeing the sinner do the thing that they're doing because of the negative impact that act is having in this situation. You see, contempt is like a hand-in-hand partner with wickedness. It always comes. And contempt brings things like dishonor, and disgrace, which are mentioned later in this verse. So people are not treated rightly when contempt comes into a situation. People are mishandled, treated as less than human in many cases, treated as objects rather than the valuable bearers of the image of God that they really are. And so friends, when we think about our own sin, we don't tend to put the word wickedness on it as a label. But sin and wickedness are the same thing. And so when you think about the sins that you struggle with, whether that's lashing out in anger in your home or impatience with your children or lust that leads to pornography, whatever the situation may be where sin crops up in your own life, wickedness is happening right there. And that wickedness is developing, growing, cultivating contempt for other people. And I would go so far because I believe Proverbs 18.3 supports it to say, as to say that contempt grows in every sinful situation. And friends, we as God's people have got to combat this. We've got to recognize that the dishonor and mistreatment of other people stems from the sin that's in the circumstance. And take a good look in the mirror. Take a good look in our own hearts and see our own sinfulness, though we may think it is a very private matter, actually is producing something in us, namely contempt, that will ripple effect out and harm others. It will. There's no way around it. And dishonor and disgrace are going to be cast on others and there's going to be harm that happens to people because of the sin that we are involved in. Lord Jesus, work in our hearts a deep 
and thorough repentance about the sin that exists in our lives. Lord, work in us the kind of repentance that changes behavior long term. Cause us to see that we are not called to wickedness. We are not people who live in wickedness as a general practice. Lord, transform us. Make us new. Enable us to remove contempt from our hearts so that we can love others as you call us to love them and as you love us. Thank you, Jesus. In your name we pray. All right, friends, the next 60 seconds, let's pray together for world revival. Lord Jesus, we are praying every day for world revival because we believe it is needed. We believe it is important. We believe that your name needs to be praised and glorified in all of humanity. And so we're asking you, Lord, to root out wickedness in our hearts as your people and in the hearts of people all across the globe, Lord. Transform people across the world into radical, devoted, passionate followers of Jesus who desire righteousness and not wickedness, Lord. Give us eyes to see what is righteous and to implement righteousness in our behavior toward each other, in the good of our brother, in the neighbor next door, in the people across political divides, Lord. Enable love to overcome all the objections and all the animosity and hate, Lord, we ask you in Jesus' name to bring this about world renewal in our time, Lord. Amen.